everyone. Today I'm here to review a book for you. I will be talking about Flame in the Mist by Renee Adia. And this is her first book and I want to say her new duology. I have not figured out if it's going to be a duology or a trilogy quite yet. I don't know. So I'm thinking I've heard from a couple people that's going to be a duology. So I'm just going to go with that. This is going to be a duology. And basically in this video I'm going to tell you what this book is about, what I thought about it, my feelings about it. And I may talk a little bit spoilers at the end. I'm not quite sure yet but if I do spoil it I will let you know. I want to apologize for my pronunciation for these names. I have tried looking up the pronunciations on her site and other locations but I cannot find them so I am beyond sure without a doubt that I will not pronounce these right and I am sorry first and foremost for that. This book follows Mariko who is a prominent daughter of a samurai and she's actually being married off to the emperor's son of his favorite consort. On the way to meet her future group her um her convoy gets attacked by the Black Clan and she narrowly escapes. She's the only one that escapes and she learns that they were after her. She disguises herself as a boy to infiltrate them and to learn more about why they were after her and you know figure out what they're doing because they are a very devious group of people that steal and kill people and things like that. And when Mariko goes to the Black Clan she's learning much more about the Black Clan and maybe they're not the evil people that they that she thinks that they are. So basically that is what this book is about in a nutshell. I've heard this book compared to Mulan and after reading it the only aspect I would say that reminds me of Mulan is the fact that she disguises herself as a boy to you know go into this thing to go into the Black Clan. That's the only resemblance I see with Mulan um, so if you're wondering in that regard in case you want to read it because of that I would say it's not like a Mulan depiction at all really but I really enjoyed this book. I'm not surprised because I love Renee Adier's uh, The Wrath of the Dawn duology. It's one of my favorite duologies and this one is great. With her books I've learned that I like the second one much more than the first one at least with her first duology. So this one um definitely left on a lot of questions and a lot of cliffhangers and I can't wait to see what the second one's gonna hold and I think I'm personally gonna like the second one a little bit better. Um, overall I did really enjoy it like I said there were a couple things I didn't love. The number one the pacing it took me about halfway throughout this book to really get invested in it. I found the progression of the first half to be really kind of slow churning and slow burning. You know she had a lot, she had this feudal Japan um, world to set up. You had to learn more about the families, learn more about the samurais, learn more about you know different varieties and things like that. So there's a lot of things she had to set up. But when the second half kicked in, it kicked in so good. I love the second half. It definitely was had a lot more action, definitely had a lot more romance, it definitely had a lot more of everything and the ending was amazing. So that's one qualm I have with this book is the kind of pacing in the first half was very very slow. Another thing I kind of hate and love is the romance. Like first of all I thought that our main character was going to be falling for a completely different character in the beginning. I don't know why I just thought she would fall for this person but she fell for somebody else and then when it happened I felt like it happened within like a second. If I could snap I would but I don't know how to snap. Um, and then after that like it was like boom and so I felt like it was kind of insta lovey but then it's okay because I do enjoy the love interest. I like the romance in this a lot. Um, so it's one of those things like I hate and love and I don't know how I feel about it. Things I liked our main character Mariko. Mariko really values her mind. She is not a warrior. She is a daughter of a samurai for sure but she does not know you know how to wield a sword or how to do things like that. She is very much um, lethal with her mind. She can make these inventions like I think she created throwing stars in this book and she created like this black smoke thing. She is very very smart. She's very very talented. She's very decisive but then sometimes she's undecisive. And I really love the message that this book sent out. This this book talked a lot about females and you know how they're kind of disregarded even you know in different societies and you know if you're a female you know are you looked down upon because you're a female and does it make you weaker when you are a female. I love that Mariko really question all these things of why can't a female be this. I just love the message that I sent out about females and the empowerment of females in this book. I thought that was hands down amazing. And I also loved learning more about samurais and feudal Japan. I haven't read too many books set like in a feudal Japan world but I really enjoyed it. Like I loved learning about the culture of these samurais and how they come to power and how they you know treat each other and how different families are. It was very very interesting and also touched on messages of like 
you know, royalty families, you know, treating, it had like a Robin Hood element almost into it, you know, stealing from the rich and feeding the poor, which I really loved as well. Can I say that I'm not spoiling it? Overall, like I said, I really enjoyed this book, you know. If you're looking for a great book about samurais, about, you know, female empowerment, about not a kick butt, she is a kick butt character, but she's kick butt more with her mind and she values herself with her mind, you know, and the romance, the romance between the two, they really value each other for themselves and not for the way they look or who they are or what you know gender they are so I really enjoyed that as well. I gave this book I want to say maybe a four and a half out of five. The only the biggest problem I have with it was the pacing. The first half is slow I'm not gonna lie to you so if you get into this book and you find the first half slow I'm right there with you. I'd say power through, the, power through it because the second half definitely picks up and definitely makes it much more interesting and the ending alone Oh, it's gonna make you want to pick up the second book because it leaves like on a, you know, insane cliffhanger almost and it's just, oh, so good. Talk a little bit more about spoilers now. So if you haven't read this book, don't watch any further if you don't want to spoil yourself. So here we go, spoilers. So the ending, so it turns out the emperor's wife or the empress, I don't know the correct terminology, killed the emperor and you know, she did it for her son and she hates the son's consort. We're, we're kind of having like a, a, a feud and war between the emperor's wife and the wife and the emperor's consort, you know, the mother between these two sons. I forget their names, I want to say Aiden, and the other one, I forget. Raiden is the son of the consort and the other one, the other one, Roku. Roku is the son of the emperor and the emperor's wife. So I feel like it's almost a war between those two women. It makes that even more interesting. Like that woman just killed the emperor. She's like, you know what? No, I don't want, you, I don't want her son to be anything like you. Boom, kills him. I also loved the very big twist at the end when oh, Oktami, I want to say his name is actually Romaro all along. I did not see that coming at all. So basically Romaro is really Oktami and Oktami is Romaro. If it sounds confusing, it is confusing. <laughs> but I really love that plot twist, how that was like, and also the plot twist of Catch in, um, Moroku's brother, his love interest, he thought, had died. No, 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 the emperor's wife, or I want to say the consort, oh, for good, has her there, I'm pretty sure, because she said a girl with a burned up face, and I'm like, it was a fire there. That has to be Amaru, if that's the right name. I am so sorry I'm pronouncing all these names wrong. So she's going to use that as leverage to get Kishen. So, oh, there's so many things, and the fact that Moroku, you know, you know, volunteered herself to help the Black Clan be escape. So both her and Otami or Renaru, what are we supposed to call him now? I don't know, um, are going to the palace together. So they're going to be together, but it's going to be like they're prisoners. So <sighs> intense. Like a lot more is going to happen in the second book, obviously. And I think I'm going to enjoy the book more because there's so many of these things we have set up. I feel like there's like five different things going on right now that I need answers to. So yeah, I'm excited. That's the only spoilers I want to talk about is those five things. I probably flew through them, but let me know your thoughts and opinions, please. I would love to know, because I need to know, what do you think about what's gonna happen in the second book? So overall, that was my thoughts and opinions on Flame in the Mist by Renee Adier. I really enjoyed it, I'm not surprised. I'm happy to have read another Renee Adier book. And yeah, if you have read this book, please let me know your thoughts and opinions and what you think is gonna happen in the second book, because I need to know people's opinions, like I need to hear your theories. <laughs> if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Mm.